Welcome to Behavior Code Podcast. This is the Tuesday show. Normally, I interview somebody from IMC Nation. Nobody's here. Alex Palacio, he'll be on in a future week. There was miscoordination with The Apprentice, booking, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So what I was doing was reviewing messenger's notes. And anybody that's um, been on this show before, early on, the first like 12 or 15 episodes, I interviewed these guys called Messengers. They graduated a very difficult program to uh, get into because of the entry fee. And they had already proven their loyalty and whatever, because there's a lot of um, strong philosophies in IMC Nation that will polarize a person. And you know, you'll clearly know if you're in or if you're out. And so then the messengers events comes along. Uh, and it's basically the language and example after example after example of how to resolve emotional conflicts. You know, and all conflicts are probably just miscommunications. And it's like I was saying to somebody the other day, we're in sales. If they don't buy, you should agree that they shouldn't buy. They're not qualified. If, uh, you know, in romance, you should both agree that you're not a fit for each other. Otherwise, one person thinks you are and the other person thinks you're not. And so there's a conflict. There's misunderstanding, usually because they're both lying. But men and women lie. They're lying are lying about what they want in a relationship. Men are lying about what they want in a relationship. And so there's going to be a lot of conflicts there, of course. And so here's the basic. The basic is to prepare yourself to be cause of communication. You want to be a cause. If you're teaching your children, you're cause. If it, you know, when you're not cause is after you've selected a teacher, then you're volunteering to be an effect. If you're a woman, when you're with a man, you're volunteering to be effect. If it's not good enough, then move on to the next. Don't complain or boss up. Now, if you could do that and people get by like that, every woman needs a man around that is going to stand up and take a knife for you. But if he's not good enough to lead, then you're going to have roaming eyes. That's the genetic code. You're going to have wandering eyes. You need a man that's better than you, that submits you, but not by like, getting you in a jujitsu hold and arm barring you and making you tap. It's not submission like that. It's not submission by brow beating you so that he just throws big words at you or talks really fast or raises his voice or in any way threatens anything. That's not submission. I mean, you could call it that. You could call it surrender. It's bullying, you know, and that's good that he can be able to do that, but that's not what you want in a relationship. You're not trying to bully the girl into being your girlfriend or bully her into agreeing. It's not, it's an ideal to say that it doesn't happen. It's, it's natural, really nature, literally natural. It's the nature in us. What's up beauty Melnick from New York city. So uh, what you want is reason, but emotions get in the way. Emotions are going to get in the way before I can even teach anything. And then this isn't even supposed to be a teaching. This is a podcast, right? Just know that whatever you learn from this, I'm like really holding back. Divnakaja, what's up? Okay, so before, so you already know that the emotions are gonna get in the way of communication, right? And we don't even need to go that extreme. We can go super basic, like what emotion are you feeling from me right now? Are you feeling any emotion? Like not, th there's the emotion you're feeling, but I mean, what am I feeling? Just guess, you don't have to say it out loud, but can you, can you put your thumb, your mental thumb on like I'm feeling something? Like, I don't even see the people that are online, but I can put my mind on, I think you're feeling this way based on our last communications. Everybody on, I've been communicating with. So everybody. So could you put your thumb on my emotional state? Whoever you're communicating with, can you like, however they're talking to you, you don't hold on to the how you think their state should be because it's fluid. It's not static. It's not frozen. It's all, it's ever changing. It can change in just a few words. In a few sentences, I can make you hate me. In a few sentences, I can make you love me. Believe it or not, if I can make you hate me in a few sentences, I can make you love me in a few sentences. Now, how willing to compromise my ethics am I uh, willing to go to do that? How innovative, how creative am I with my words and sounds? And, you know, and then what's available to my imagination? What do I even know? And then from that, you can pull it together. So cause, you want to be cause of communication by understanding the other person has a state of mind. 
The child has a state of mind. The parent has a state of mind. The coworker, they have a state of mind when you're communicating with them. And you don't want to be the kind of person that needs the other, uh, that needs your state of mind respected or you are going to lose it. That's pathetic. That's barely zero. That's like toddler. Now it's better than most people because most people are walking around that like, they don't even know their cause. They, they don't even know the state of mind is a thing. Like maybe they've heard it before, but they don't know what a state of mind is. What do I know about a state of mind even? I'm just, but I've been talking about it a lot longer and I've been practicing it. I definitely know something about a state of mind. It's almost like think of a, ment a, a state of water. Like there's liquid state, there's gas state, there's solid frozen state. There's at least three states of water. Then you could think of like water that's in a, what's the state of that water? Is it moving or is it stagnant? Is it flowing like a river or is it in a lake? If it, even if it's in the ocean, it's not stagnant in the ocean. Is it moving in a current? Is it upwelling, which is like a current, but it goes up and down? Is it gyrating, making a gyre? What's it doing? So these are, this is the state of water. So what is your mental state? Is it moving? Is it, where is it moving to? Is it pulled somewhere? Can you hear in somebody's voice and in their face and everything that they have a state of mind? Okay, so you need to consider if you want to be cause. This is the first step to call, to be cause in your communications. Meaning what? You want to influence people when they're angry. You want to calm them down. When they're not excited, you want to excite them. When they're not enthusiastic about that thing, you want to enthuse them. When you want them to back off, they back off. When you want them to come near, they come. Can you change how you're talking to affect them? To do that, you need to know where they're starting at least a little bit. I mean, maybe there are some things that no matter what, you can pull them in that direction, but you might want to know if there's something very off in the moment. You want to, you want to have a gauge of where they're starting. Okay. Um, hold on. I have it. It just blanked on me. What was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I guess before what state of mind is who are they? Who are they? If you can remind yourself of their role and their role to you, just who are they? And then what state of mind are they in? And this is how you prep your mind for a communication. Who are they? What state of mind are they in? And then be listening, continue listening. That's why I invite people to get on the phone with me. I mean, we do messaging and it's like, fuck, fuck quarantine. You lose perspective. You lose the sound. Video time if you can. Girls, put on your face and video time with me. Let's have a good conversation. Why put on your face? Because those colors and what makeup does to your face pulls, it, it, it raises your yin. So it pulls more from me, pulls more of my mind, pulls more of my words, pulls more of my enthusiasm. It's attractive. And that's what pulling is, attraction. Okay. Um, so when you start to listen to people's emotions, what will naturally happen is you start to acknowledge that they're feeling a certain way. You can do like a very uh, discreet acknowledgement, like, are you sad? Like, it's very clear. I'm acknowledging like literally. Or there's just an acknowledge, uh, like a, un, um, a sub communication acknowledgement, a sub acknowledgement. Because let's say somebody's sad and you start to soften so you're not as intimidating or they're excited and you start to excite it up. You don't have to acknowledge that they're excited, but you are acknowledging passively through you know, your body. So as you see people's emotions, as you recognize them, you'll naturally start acknowledging people's emotions. Now this deepens the communication. People will start to open up much, much more they'll feel more and more comfortable. Now, what happens is then people, they will release deeper contents of their mind. This is what happens when you're on the phone with me or you come to base one and you hang out, you come to beast camp. I mean, I have to use these because it, who even remembers what it was like before lockdown? I mean, maybe, maybe some of you are in places of the world that, I mean, I know Cassie's in another country. Everybody else is American. So, Brugia is on. So 
by the way, subscribe. If you're watching the recording of this, you should totally be subscribed. Everybody here should be subscribed to the Behavior Code YouTube channel and Behavior Code Spotify or Apple Podcast or any podcast app. And leave a review so that more people, it gets boosted right now. Like whoever's on right now, you get the stuff like subscribe at some point, go to your phone, the Behavior Code, leave a review, five stars, <laughs> preferably. Um, so you sense their emotions, you acknowledge their emotions. So you just keep listening. You got to keep going back to step, step one is like face their emotions. You want to be so good at communication that no emotion in another person repels you, but it doesn't trigger you either. You can't lose control of your communications. Like I was saying on a uh, silent flute last night or something that you destroy what you've been creating as soon as you lose control because your communication is what creates or, or destroys. You're living the life that you've created through your communications with people. And when you lose your cool, you start communicating in ways that repels people or at least repels the people that, uh, you know, you had just put there with a different kind of communication. You might attract a police officer, <laughs> right? That's attractive. <laughs> uh, so as people get more comfortable because you're acknowledging their current mental state, their current emotional state as it's happening, and your acknowledgement is maybe sometimes passive or it's just, it's a body language or somehow recognition of their state and their state changing they'll start to open up in ways that is super uh, a rapport building. You build rapport with people, but it also opens them up to deeper bruises or, or opens up to you their deeper bruises. As you walk into people's emotions by acknowledging and they let down a shield and acknowledging and they let down a shield. And if you're doing it to each other, it's like orgasmic communication. And you, you acknowledge and you let down the shield. You're always listening to what is the emotion behind the person's communication. What state are they in now? Not what they're saying. Don't listen to what they're saying in, in the sense of like, oh, they're being accurate. Listen to how they're saying it how they're, and what they're saying, but how they're saying it. That's what needs to be acknowledged. You know, People will think they have a good conversation when they just yammer at each other, speed talking to each other because so much data and information was transmitted, but it was a, a storm of emotions that just unacknowledged emotions and they go away with so much static energy inside of them looking to shock something. And the next person they have a communication with, they may shock because of what they came out of. This happens a lot with like Latin and Caribbean people, their families, they think they're having a good conversation with their family and it's just cultural, but they're like yelling at each other. There's a joyment, a, a sense of joy that you can detect in people, but there's also a sense of talking over each other competing for the ear of each other putting each other down is uh, very cleverly very under the radar and they just do it to everybody that's suppressive culture so this everybody that comes into contact with you i mean the more you follow me you be, are aware of their emotional state you're paying attention what state are they in now what state am i in right now you just keep checking what state am i in right now and that's probably why you're following. That's why you show up and listen because it's my state and it's my daily state and it's my hourly state. You create your state and you acknowledge that you have created your state by how you're talking to yourself, how you're evaluating your day to day. It's very simple and straightforward here at the temple because I live the monk life. I'm a monk. So daily discipline and consistency will reveal where some subconscious garbage is influencing because if it wasn't for the subconscious that every day would just be the same. Why is there any, why do I feel differently today than yesterday? Because I should know why, if I don't know why it's my subconscious is influencing. And then I can go back and look at how did I evaluate different events? What communications did I have? And it's always going to be like one of those two. Is there a third reason? I mean, so the miscommunications, that's what I'm talking about now. The how did you evaluate things? That's a different scenario. I'm not talking about that now, but that's, you know, you get better, the better you get at communicating, the better you get at acknowledging people's emotions, the better you'll get at acknowledging your own emotions. And when you can acknowledge your own emotions, then you'll catch where your subconscious has evaluated something in a way that makes you feel less. 
you'll catch those because you're just, you get good at the skill of acknowledging emotional state. But first we do it in others. That's what influences attractive as a science to learn to communicate in a way that seduces, that sells, that influences. Convincing, rhetoric, storytelling. These things are life skills that you don't want to avoid because you don't like seduction as a word. You don't like influence as a word. You don't like mind control. My, it's not my fucking mind control. Mind control, like you just you're throwing out words if you do something like that. Mind control is a very specific thing, and it refers to an already natural mechanism if, of the mind that everybody everybody is exploiting. It's just how much and how aware are you? That's why you don't want to avoid seduction topics or influence or sales topics. Don't avoid sales or you'll get sold when you least expect it. If you avoid learning sales, all that happens is you get sold whenever people, whenever you're convinced that you're not being sold. You'll just buy when you're, but when you study sales, you'll realize that you do buy when, when you're not pressured and when you don't feel like you're being taken advantage of and all the things that you would normally feel, but you'll see where you're still getting sold in situations that you just were unaware that you were being influenced. When you study uh, seduction, you'll be unaware of where you're being seduced and how to seduce. When you study influence, you're unaware of how much is being, anyway, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Acknowledge emotions. What state of emotion are they in? What state of mind are they in? And I'm using that somewhat interchangeably, the emotion and mind, because they are connected. That's why I titled this, which I may change the title on the recording, but I titled this something like, uh, what did I say here? We're moving into areas where they're not sane. Is that something my teacher, Arash Sephardi Bazaar, said at his messenger's event? AZD, okay. Uh, so I'm going to go here in a second, actually. Um, uh, just got a bunch of messages that's distracting for a second. Hold on. Um, acknowledge emotions. You guys remember you could type it, what I was just saying. Acknowledge emotion and... Uh, what state they're in. Oh, because, oh, we're moving into areas where people are not sane. So as people get comfortable in communicating with you and you open them up more, then, hold on, this battery needs to be plugged in. And you open them up more, you'll touch deeper parts of their mind that are deeper, more deeply bruised. And that will come out in emotional reactions, which from the outside just looks insane because why are they reacting to? That doesn't, their reaction is not justified from what I just said or what just happened, but you just touched a bruise. The more comfortable you get with people, the more the deeper bruises are available for you to touch through psychological bruises, right? Psycho-emotional bruises. They literally go insane. The emotion will make their mind regress. And from the outside, it's just like they switch personality. They change. As a man, let's talk about behavior before I go. As a man, you need to have more of these sorted out than your woman. You're supposed to date down. She's supposed to date up. And up and down is essentially maturity level. You could talk about he makes more money. Yeah. You could talk about she's younger. Yeah. You could talk about it in terms of experience. Yeah. It's maturity. And maturity could be one measure of maturity would be your ability to communicate and control your communication. When you're feeling a feeling are you going to fly off the handle with your words or can you still control your words and actions even though you can feel every feeling? Maturity. So that's behavior code. Um, so if you liked this, then I definitely recommend the silent flute. I go deeper into this stuff into the, in the silent flute program. That's at ninthlimb.com with the number nine. Uh, definitely share this if you liked it. Subscribe. And I won't take any questions today because I got a temple meeting thing happening right now. Sign up for the Beast Camp if you're a guy. Beast Camp is this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that's all for now. Let's see, tomorrow, I may do something tomorrow. Uh, Enlightened masculinity has changed, definitely Thursday. And we'll catch you then, all right? Os.